My name is Jarrington Baysmore, and I'm Inspection Supervisor for under the Planning and Growth Management Department, Coast Permanent Inspection Services Division. And my primary disciplines are the Nuisance Code and the Zoning Ordinance. A nuisance is classified per Webster as anything that can cause disruption to anybody's livelihood or anything that could just be classified as a disruption in the normal walks of life. In this case, we're referencing on residential properties the various violations that constitute a public nuisance. For example, if a property contains tall grass and tall weeds, overgrown shrubberies and bushes, and uh, the most obvious one of all, trash and debris throughout the property uh, that will accumulate any types of insects or rodents. For us, uh, Coast Permits Inspection Services, uh, we focus solely on residential properties. And our job on a day-to-day -day basis is we receive a complaint and we will go out and verify that the complaints are valid according to our code. We have various types of violations listed and uh, we will check to see if the complainant's complaint is of validity or not by conducting an uh, initial investigation. If it comes to find out that these violations and others do exist, then we'll move forward and create a case and try our best to make contact with the property owners via the methods of uh, postal mail and posting the property with our documentation, letting the property owner know that we have observed violations, nuisance violations on their property, and that they need to address them in a timely fashion. You can file a complaint anytime when you see a, or you think you see a violation on a person's property. From there, we will be in receipt of the uh, complaint, and that's when the, uh, an inspector will go out to verify if, the, if it's a valid complaint or not. You will go to our website, then uh, the Charles County website, and then you will uh, go through the links to go through the Planning and Growth Management, and then uh, Coast Permits Inspection Services, and then on that, once you get to that link, there is a report of property or structure complaint. That's which will directly come to us, and we will come out and verify that the violations exist. We are not here to have that iron fist and, 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 and tell you all how to keep your property in a certain condition, but we are here to notify you when there are violations that exist that could potentially generate situations such as excessive rodents in a community or in a certain section. But in order for you to try to minimize this, uh, we just want to let you know about your violations and give you the time that it takes to uh, get into compliance. If additional timing is needed, we have no problems working with you and we will work with you. But as long as you show that the communication is effective and thorough, uh, we will work with you until it gets to abatement. Help keep your family and community protected. An annual seasonal flu vaccine is the best way to help protect against the flu. Skip the line at your local pharmacy and get your flu shot at the Charles County Department of Health, where drive through flu shots are being conducted. To find out more, head to charlescountyhealth.org. Hi, I'm Terry Bell Harris with According to the Word Church over here in La Plata at the Willing Helpers Hall. I want to thank the Charles County Department of Health for providing support and financial aid through the Charles County CARES Act grant, which helps underserved families in our community during this pandemic. Thank you so much. My name is Lisa Lashaw. I'm the Director of Environmental Health with the Charles County Department of Health. Today, I'm here to talk to you about rats. Rats are native species of the state of Maryland and to Charles County. There are two major rat groups that are present in Maryland and the county. That includes the Norway rat, which is also called the brown rat, and the roof rat, which call, is called the black rat. The notable difference is that the black rat lives high up, so it likes roof lines and trees. The Norway rat tends to be on the ground, but the Norway rat actually nests around foundations. Things like sheds and walkways, you'll find it. Rats in general tend to be an apprehensive species, so they're very difficult to capture. They're not curious like a mouse is. Rats like predictability. That's why when you're going to do an inspection for a rat, you really want to look for rub marks along your foundation walls. It'll be a black, oily type substance. They tend to run the same track along a linear line um, as part of their home range for food and for nesting. The Norway rat has a home range of about 150 feet. They don't like to travel further than that. 
The black rat's somewhat similar. They are about 1,076 square feet that they will travel. So you want to make sure when we're dealing especially with Norway rats, which is the most common rat species, that you look at your food sources and you look at nuisance control property maintenance issues. So you want to make sure that you're not creating nesting areas by having tall grass or wood that's stacked up or dark corners and an overgrown shrubbery. You want to make sure that you're looking for areas where there's burrows, there's holes in the ground. If you have any openings in your house, you want to make sure that you close those up with no more than a quarter inch mesh screen, uh, metal, sheet metal, masonry. Uh, rats chew through expansion foam and they use it as nesting material. So you want to make sure that you don't use that type of material. You want to make sure that you're evaluating your garbage storage situation. Make sure they're using metal cans and that they have tightly fitted lids because rats can't chew through metal, but they can chew through plastic. So you don't want to provide them with an easy food source. Another easy food source is compost piles. You want to make sure that you're only using um, things like grass cuttings and leaves in your compost pile. You don't want to be using food scraps because that actually feeds the rats. You're also going to want to make sure that you evaluate if you have pets the feeding situation and the waste control situation. That you Make sure that once you're done feeding your animal that you collect all the food and you dump that so there's not an easy food source or an easy water source for the rats. You also want to make sure that daily you're picking up the manure from your animals because they'll also eat that. In regard to pest control, you can use poisons, bait boxes, you can use physical means such as rat traps. You know, We always recommend that you contact a professional exterminator because as I said, rats are an apprehensive species. They're sometimes very difficult to capture. You can effectively do rat control, um, however in about a month if you don't take on the nuisance issues on your property, the conditions that support the rats to nest and to stick around, that population will return. So it is a coordination between your management of your property, keeping things neat, tidy, not overgrown, um, looking for those nesting areas and also providing the pest control means through a professional exterminator to eradicate the condition. It means in neighborhoods that we take on a collective approach so that rats are not uh, able to stick around and to go from one property to the next. If you do have wood piles, as we recognize that people do burn wood this time of the year, especially as the winter is approaching, you want to make sure that you're keeping that 18 inches off the ground so you can actually inspect and make sure that you're not having a nesting problem around that wood pile. So the key to rat control really is a coordinated approach and patience and monitoring and making sure that if you do take on physical and chemical pest control means that you know what you're doing, you do the research and the Maryland Department of Agriculture has wonderful resources for homeowners dealing with any sort of pest issue. They have a homeowner's manual that you can get from the MDA, the Maryland Department of Agriculture site. They also have a, rodent, a professional rodent control man manual that pesticide applicators use to study for their exams. Thank you very much for your time and attention to this. Applying for jobs with Charles County government is now easier and more efficient. Visit www.charlescountymd.gov for more information.